E aí galera, beleza? Aqui é o Pinho e hoje eu tô aqui com o Carlitos. Vocês, se vocês seguem ele aí no, no Instagram, se vocês seguem o Instagram, vocês sabem que esse cara é um dos caras mais presentes aí no Instagram. Muitos de vocês aí que já me falaram que já seguiam ele antes de, de verem o meu canal. Então eu vou começar a trazer mais pessoas aqui para entrevistar. Então se você quiser uma entrevista com alguém aqui de Toronto, principalmente, ou de Nova York, é só você me falar aí que a próxima vez que eu for lá ou eu posso trazer uma entrevista aqui, certo? Então a gente vai começar aqui. What's up, Carlitos? Oh, Amen. Okay, so this guy, three years ago when I started doing calisthenics, was one of the first guys uh, I checked out in, uh, on Instagram. Thank you. And now I'm here with the guy, <laughs> the guy himself. Yes. Okay, so I'm Maybe. just gonna ask you a couple of questions about calisthenics in general. Okay. okay. So first thing, tell me, uh, when did you start calisthenics and why? Why did you make it like your main, like, workout, your main activity? Uh, I started calisthenics about five years ago now. I started in LA while I was in, a, in an exchange program in school. Uh, and it was mainly because I had, I had an injury playing soccer in my knee. So I had to start going to the gym to do, uh, to do recovery and a little bit of, of physiotherapy. And that, that initial step just got me into the gym. And then when I was in LA, I started, you know, going to Venice Beach and Santa yeah. Monica, and you see all those guys doing crazy the stuff. The mecca of calisthenics. Yeah, that's like you know the palace. Yeah, <laughs> so, true. Um, at that point, I was like, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Like, what what better things that you know, like feeling yeah. strong, being outdoors, being at the beach, and like just enjoying the day. And that's kind of how I felt it. And so I started training there. The sense of community that I got from it was really amazing because mm -hmm. I knew nothing. But I stepped on the bar and people were like, oh, this is how you do this, or like helping me out. And it's like a different vibe than when you go to the gym and everyone's wearing their headphones, you yeah. know? Um, so but I really like that. But before, did you did you do any body weight exercise at all before? Not really. I, I've been into sports my whole life. Swimming, tennis, and soccer were okay. kind of like the main things. And so the, the athletic part of me was always there, but nothing like calisthenics where it was just like pure fitness. And so that, that kind of started it on me. Okay, so from that time, you like you made calisthenics your only activity, or yeah. were you still doing weightlifting stuff and sports? And no, no. At that point, like it was like okay, like I, I, I felt like it was like a switch. I discovered what I what I liked and uh, started calisthenics and started you know getting better and better, and I felt like I was progressing really quick. You know what I mean? Like for a lot of people, it takes you know a certain amount of time to do a muscle up. I, I did it pretty. How long did it take for you? Probably like two months since I first started and it's pretty quick. Yeah, it's it's pretty quick. Yeah, like you it know took, it took me like six months. Yeah, right. And so like a lot of people I feel like kinda of go through that and so like I, I felt like shit, like I'm I'm pretty strong at this. I, I feel like I'm getting it. Yeah. And and that kinda of gave me a sense of confidence of like, okay, maybe I can I can progress on more advanced stuff and cool. I started doing the more advanced stuff. It came to me pretty easily and I was like, yeah. okay. There's something here. I love it. You know, a question that a lot of people in my channel they, they ask about is about the legs. What about the legs? Leg. What did you do at that time? Were you adding any weights to your leg training, or were you just doing high reps, plyometric stuff? Man, to be honest, at that point I was so naive into like the whole fitness and calisthenics scene, and all I wanted to do was just like rep out, rep out. That I kind of put a wall on on legs, so I wasn't really doing that much legs. I would do one day where I would do jump squats yeah. and stuff and not pay too much attention of it. But then I realized... It's not as fun, right? It's not as fun and like you can't do that much with it. True. But it got to a point where I'm like, okay, like this... I like, I started learning more about fitness in general, what, what I needed to do to become stronger, to get better. Cool. And doing legs was part of it. And so I started going ham, ham, ham on it. At that point, you know, doing calisthenics and legs is tough so I started adding weights doing more deadlifts doing more weighted squats and introducing that into like my body weight workout so trying to do 
more plyometric stuff and more mm -hmm. things that have to do with you know single leg yeah. stuff or isolation and that helped me out a lot cool and how did you split your workout before and how did that change from now or are you still uh, split your training the same way as before my training has evolved a lot but mm -hmm. one principle that I always go through is I want to have fun I don't want to force myself to do anything I, I try to have a very all-around training and I say okay this week at least I'm gonna train legs I'm gonna train arms I'm gonna train chest but I don't limit myself okay if one day like I'm sore because I did a crazy workout and I feel like I can't do chest I won't do it it's not like have a day specific for everything mm -hmm. I want to have fun with it I want to continue doing yeah. it and you allow your body to recover too. yes right? yes and and so like I, I allow a lot of flexibility within my training mm -hmm. and so I will always include full body stuff um, but I will have a focus on something depending on the day right yeah cool and what about injury I've heard a lot of people like mainly in Brazil they see people doing crazy stuff they can even do like one pull up and they already want to do a, uh, a muscle up they can barely do like 10 clean push-ups <laughs> and dips and they already want to do a planche yeah so and a lot of people like they get either discouraged because they don't progress as fast as they think they would or they get injured because they doing too much too soon so have you ever got any injury yeah and and again it's it's more that that naiveness and I think yeah. uh, it all comes down to knowledge knowing not only yourself but also mm -hmm. knowing everything around you you know and, and what is good for your training I'm not gonna go and do something that I know I'm not capable of first of all and I'm also not going to you know just because someone's doing something I'll try to do it yeah you know what I mean I know myself and, and one of the things about calisthenics and about fitness in general is that like sometimes you have to put your ego aside egos can destroy your training sure. because you're like yo I'm feeling good I squatted this much last day or I did that many pull-ups the other day like, yeah let me try and do more more mm -hmm. more more and the the reality is that fitness is like everything in life you're gonna have some days where you, everything's on point you feel strong you do your rep properly your form is on point and there's days that for whatever reason you're sleeping you're eating whatever yeah your mood things are not gonna be that way and so you can't expect that every day in training is going to be the same and every day you're gonna be your best and so that's one big thing and the other thing is it's just learning about what I need to do in order to train effectively mm -hmm. um, there was a point where like you know when I first started I was like ah what's warm-up uh, who cares who cares who cares true until I got injured <laughs> you know what so I mean? when, where was your first injury where my first injury body? was my shoulder left and left shoulder okay. yeah um, doing muscle-ups mm -hmm. and it was a small injury but it was enough to kind of click in me like oh shit I need I need to I need to yeah. take care of myself did you slow down after that yes so for how long did it take to it it took me about like two months to recover to the point that I could do muscle-ups again so and two months no muscle-ups no muscle-ups at all and then maybe like a month or two to kind of get the strength back and feel like okay I can go again at it um, so that was kind of like my first injury then um, I was having trouble with my elbows like uh, like in the inner side or no in the, in the outside like outside yeah, over here is the opposite that you can feel right yeah inside like the light, I think. Huh. maybe yeah it depends it, and, and so like I started feeling feeling it here feeling it feeling it and I discovered that my form was just messed up you know and it in wasn't reach exercise and push-ups push yeah mostly push-ups and, and straight bar dips um, and so I think that wasn't necessarily an injury but it kind of put things in perspective like okay like I gotta work on my form a little bit more I got yeah. to I have to understand what are the things that I need to do in order to you know take care of myself and, and make sure that my training is as effective and as enjoyable as I can um, and then I messed up my shoulder again just because I didn't warm up mm -hmm. um, and that was that was bad like that was last year um, the beginning of last year so almost two years ago now and it put me away for like six months like wow. there was like do you know what specifically like happened like um well i wasn't i wasn't warmed up mm -hmm. i tried to muscle up and i feel like at that point something happened on my rotator cuff i actually went to the doctor and they said that i had a partial tear 
on my, on my front delt and some damage in my rotator cuff. And so that, those two things created a whole chain of yeah. things that just make, like, make it harder. And so for like six months, I was dealing with you know, recovery, really going back to basics, strengthening, resting, yeah. um, icing it, like all those things just to try and you know, get back to the game. And then after right. that, it was more like, okay, being careful. Um, but an injury can really set you back and it's, 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 it's one of those things that like either you like take a lot of knowledge first to kind of prevent it or you wait until it happens and then yeah. you're like you learn from your own mistakes true um, so it's tough right Every, everybody's different but at the end of the day I think those are those are things that we need to definitely cool. take care of yeah, so I have two more quick questions. So one of the things I got asked the most is like, is it actually possible to build muscle with no added weights, no uh, weighted calisthenics, no, just the basics of calisthenics. Is that possible like with your experience, with your clients, with, with yourself? It, it is possible, but of course it's a little bit of a longer road. You have to have patience and you have to have, you know, keenness in how your form is, you know? Um, the the sort of two methods you said no weighted calisthenics right no way yeah if if you're not going to do weighted calisthenics the methods that i would apply in order to build more muscle is isometric holds and uh, negatives if you work on those two sort of elements you can definitely build muscle but at the same time is you have to put in the time okay it's not like it's not as easy as it sounds yeah um, you have to put in the time you have to work on isolation you have to work on single arm stuff single leg stuff and that's the kind of stuff that is going to help you out it's really like you try to increase the resistance of your body through through that either using uni unilateral movements or simply just sticking back to the basics of negatives and ice okay, so when you, when you, you uh, when you talk about negatives and uh uh, isometric holds so it's like within the exercise or is just you go and do just isometrics or you just do negatives or you be more uh, you integrate this like in your for, for example your dips yeah. you do like isometric hold on the bottom or a negative is just jumping on the bar and going down slow even though you can do a lot of more reps I, I, I down believe down. in in, um, in diversity and in, in like being able to like not just focus on that it's gonna yeah. help you out because the truth is you want to keep your mobility you want to keep your flexibility you want to keep those things and through reps you can do that and so like I wouldn't necessarily just isolate you know a negative or an isometric movement yeah. but I would I would mix it up you know instead of doing 10 pull-ups right do five slower you know what I mean mm -hmm. and then the last one you kind of do your isometric All pull, you know and so it's not fully getting away from the reps mm -hmm. and working on isometric okay. and just adding and negative, some just adding isometric uh, elements into your workout and just kind of scaling down okay okay so the last thing uh, what's your advice for people who's just starting calisthenics or who who's been training for six months and then just plateaued somewhere so what piece of advice you can give to them uh, well first piece of advice would be like train with someone you know what I mean? Train with someone because that will help you always. If I'm training with you, you'll see something that I don't see or that I don't feel. And so having a different perspective or a, an outside perspective always helps. Um, another thing that I would say is, is learn from what you're doing. Um, there are a hundred ways of doing a movement and, and you wanna find something that works for you. And if you feel like you're plateauing in something, try something different and then go back to it. Um, and then third thing that I would do would be have patience at the end of the day like what, What's the point to getting somewhere? Yeah, and like what's next? You know what I mean? Like try try and make your training sustainable if this is something that you're only trying to do for two years then cool hurry up but if you really care about your health about your strength about your skills then have the patience to learn about it have the patience to practice it have the patience to fail and get back up and do it again you know yeah. um, everyone 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 I don't care what people say everyone will go through ups and downs through their training there's times where I feel like shit and I don't want to train but I'll still train mm -hmm. just because I need to tell my body like yo like we're still in this you know what I mean it's, sure. it's if, 
even if you don't feel like doing it, right? Yeah, you, you, you have to scale it down, work on ways, but at the end of the day, like, you have to listen to your body, put your ego aside, um, and, and really, like, focus on what the end goal is. If your end goal is to be strong and healthy, and, you know, just, just have that sort of balanced life for as long as you can, then there's no point on rushing, right rushing now, it, right? you know? So True. that would be All right, man. Thank you very much. No, thank you. All right, guys. So I'm going to put uh, the caption in, in Portuguese so you guys can check everything. So it's going to be probably, <laughs> you know, two hours from now because I'll be doing that <laughs> right after. So if you watch this video, like right when I like upload it, you're not going to see anything in Portuguese. Sorry. So, but you can check it out later in two hours. It's going to be the captions there. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. See you guys soon. Later. <laughs>